Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Skull Masher that came as part of the second campaign to Borderlands 3. Now, the Skull Masher is obviously unique to the DLC, and there's only one way to obtain this gun, and I will show you a clip of me actually obtaining it. Now, this gun is only obtainable from that chest that I just showed you, and overall, pretty solid weapon. It's one of the best weapons for flak right now, honestly. It, it's a really good substitute for the Wedding Invitation, because the Wedding Invitation is stuck to level 53, since you can't obtain a new one, so you can't really change it. Now, I'll showcase the Skull Masher and tell you what it does. Now, the Skull Masher has been a an iconic Borderlands gun ever since Borderlands 1. This is how old this gun is. Now, it had several changes. In Borderlands 1, it had the X5, uh, X6 multiplier. In Borderlands 2, it had the X5 multiplier. In pre-sequel it went back to X6, and then in Borderlands 3 it went back to X5. But in Borderlands 3, the thing that's different about the Skull Masher is that it has higher base damage, but still remains or keeps the 5 bullets. Also, this thing kicks like a horse, by the way. Like, look at this thing. It is insanely easy to get to maximum recall on this thing. Moving on to bosses now, um, the Skull Asher does really good against bosses. Uh, Grave Ward is probably the best example to use in this. Uh, let me make sure I'm using my correct anointments, and I am. But it majorly depends on your anointments. This thing kicks like a horse, and it is so hard to keep it on target. But once it does, it does really solid damage to Grave Ward. Uh, I got mine with 100% on action skill and anointment, and I want to say it does really, it does really fine. It does the same damage as the wedding invitation, even more sometimes. As the wedding invitation, if I have it here, does only 3.5 thousand damage, and the skull masher it can do 3,000 damage for less magazine because my version has the highest magazine for the lowest damage, so you can get more damage out of this if you want. Having the 4 magazine one will definitely be helpful. Now, the reason why this gun is one of the best for flak is because of the 5 projectiles and how they work in Borderlands 3. Now with flak, he has a special skill called Megavore, which allows you to hit, or hit criticals from any part of the body. And since the Skull Masher has 5 bullets, you bet your ass it will definitely hit the Megavore on almost every single bullet. Since it has five bullets, it, it almost guarantees a bullet to always be landed on it. That and it helps with flag since if there are multiple enemies around him, for example here, if I shoot once, all the enemies are going to be dead. As seen here. It does stupidly well against Woketin, and I will get to that in a second once I actually get to him, but I will show you what it does against the Valkyries. And show you a bit more clips of me using it on Flak. I would show you a clip of me using it on other characters, but unfortunately, Flak is the only character I got to level 57 as of this moment, and actually has none of the DLC. And I realize I'm actually slowly becoming a Flak main instead of maining Moe's. As I always do. But no, this gun is really enjoyable and it is definitely a substitute for a wedding invitation. If you get a max damage version, this actually can out damage a Krakatoa. Which is really good. Now, here's a prime example. If I shoot this badass, it should have actually killed the Kraken because of the, the whole ricochet thing. But maybe, I don't know, maybe that's exclusive to the Wedding Invitation, but I'm not going to pull it off. But it's actually really good at killing the, the Kraken's legs as well, since if you kill the legs, you'll actually get more Legendaries out of them. Ah, oh, looks like we didn't really get anything. Although that was a really nice Thunderbolt Fist. 
Oh, damn it. Uh, one minute. Oh, you're gonna have to excuse that. That was a sudden cut. <laughs> Alright, moving on to the Valkyries. And then I'll move on to Wotan. Since I like to gauge most things using that. So I find like the Valkyries and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah. Uh, it... I almost want to say that the winning invitation can still compete. Because the winning invitation doesn't... It has more chances to basically ricochet and hit other targets and do multiple damage. But I'm not even using the right anointments. And I'm doing massive damage to basically everything. The only bad thing about the Skull Masher is that it has 700 bloom on it. It has probably the highest bloom in the game. And it is so hard to control. It also doesn't have bullet regeneration. Like the wedding invitation. But it feels satisfying to shoot. Even though it's really hard to fire this thing. But it's really nice to know that you have a sniper with 5 fire rate. Even though you know that the recoil is going to kick up to the moon. It's still really fun. And this DLC overall added a lot of really nice guns that I will also get to. Like the Anarchy. Anarchy is becoming one of my favorite guns. And we're almost done with the Valkyries. Almost fell. Don't want to do that. And that's the Valkyries. And the sky is raining legendaries because of the newest event. See? There you go. Got a, got a Rack Attack Krakatoa. I'll take that. Alright, gonna move on to Ota now. Alright, moving on <laughs> to Ota now. Sorry about that. Uh, this gun should actually do <coughs> pretty fine against Wotan. Uh, and definitely a better substitute to winning invitation. It can break his legs almost instantly. And you don't have to rely on crits that much, as uh, you have five bullets to choose from. And you can also drain his shields without having to actually uh, face him. Since the Skull Master has five bullets and it has a very high chance to ricochet bullets off of Heart Cypherses. Although, the winning invitation still does better. But the Skull Master isn't that bad doing that regards. And you can body shot Wotan as much as you want. And it can, it can also do that. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Oh, it's gonna, things are getting a bit harsh there. Uh, hold on. There's so, sometimes if you ignore enemies, this will happen. But yeah, that's why I like Jacob's guns against uh, Wotan. As long as you hit them right, you don't need to go up there and actually drain his shields. But I should, because <laughs> it's getting messy. I was just trying to, to show you that you actually can do said things. Alright, now it's time for the moment of truth. Nope, you can't actually do the flak bore on the Skull Masher. That's kind of disappointing. Would have been nice to see that. Oh man. <laughs> uh, still, really good against Wartan. As long as you don't, you know, go into fight for your life like I am. While trying to demonstrate a gun, and it can bank his legs uh, pretty easily too. Because his legs actually have a lot of health. And there you go. That's how the Skull Master does against both then. Uh, pretty good stuff. Let's see what we got. We got a Redistributor. A Fire one, that is. And a Kibsworth. Takes boom. Man, the event really did increase the amount of loot you can get. I have actually not found that many legendaries from Moten. He almost always drops you one of his things in his loot pool. 
Tank Command Shield, that's a Mayhem 4 drop, and a lop. So I hope you guys found this uh, video helpful. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.